about unpacking with Ollie Debug. Ollie Debug is everybody's favorite tool for um, analyzing Windows executables, cheating on Windows-based games, and so on. And I was sort of horrified to observe that they took it out of the Flare VM sometime recently. Um, there are more modern tools, but Ollie Debug is the classic. So I put in here how to go get your Ollie Debug, um, which we'll use. So you have to have some file to work with. And I'm just using PuTTY, which is just a Windows SSH client. It's a harmless file, a free download. But you download a particular version of PuTTY, and you get it here. Here's PuTTY. Let me get rid of this one. Let's throw it in a recycle bin. And uh, here's my PuTTY. All right. All right, so what I'm going to do is check the hash of PuTTY. And so I downloaded and installed HashCalc, for some reason also not included in the Flare VM. But anyway, then I can run the hash of this thing, because you want to make sure you're starting from exactly this file just to avoid uh, having the instructions fail on you. So I run PuTTY, and the SHA-256 starts with 9F9, and that's what I wanted. So I've got exactly the version of this executable file that I want to mess with. All right. So if you launch PuTTY, it's just going to show you a, a program here. You can see how it works. Just to make sure that the prile is working, so you double click it, and it lo loads this page, where now you can put in the name of your SSH server and connect and so on. I'm just going to cancel. I don't actually want to use it. I just want to verify that it runs. And now we're going to compress it with UPX. So I open a command line and go to the desktop where I put my putty. All right, and then I compile, compress it with UPX minus O for output putty comp.exe. And there's my putty.exe. And now it tells me it has taken 531 kilobytes and shrunk it down to 267 kilobytes, about half the size. And now it's packed. And so here is putty comp. It's half the size on the disk, but if I run it, it runs just the same, which is what I was talking about before. It is kind of amazing. It's small on the disk. It unpacks it to load it in RAM. Um, it does not just copy the exe directly from the disk into RAM, which is the way a normal Windows load works. All right. So the hash of the compressed file the SHA-256 should start with 745, so let's verify that. Um, and it does, 745. So uh, it's doing what I expected here. All right, so it works. Now we can run PE Studio, which is one of my favorite tools, and they took it out of the uh, Flare VM, so I had to download it. I'll show you where to get it here. It is just... Uh, like I say, the people who didn't get the Flare VM should not be too sad because it turns out <laughs> that the Flare VM, they removed a lot of the tools I want anyway. So PE Studio is in here somewhere. There it is. PE Studio is a really powerful tool that analyzes files a lot of ways. So let's run it in PuTTY. And I see there's a problem with one of my images there. Um, let me just pause a sec and see if I can figure out what the problem is here. Um, okay, it doesn't have PMA 12139. That's what I thought. I can probably fix that right away. Um, PMA 1... Shouldn't have closed that. PMA 12139. Okay, it should be right here. Ah, uh, there it is. All right, let me try sending it up. All right, that might have done it. Let's refresh this page. There we go. Good, good. All right. So um, anyway, so what this tool does, I'm going to run it on PuTTY. OK. And it takes a little while for this tool to finish loading. So I'm going to run another copy of the same tool. and run it on the compressed putty. All right, so let's talk about this tool, which is a really powerful automatic analysis tool for an executable file. So what you got here is the name of the file. Here it shows you the hash values of the file and the entry point, which is uh, 
where it's going to launch, although it looks like it just shows you the executable code there here. And then it sends it up to VirusTotal to tell you if this file is malicious. And one out of 68 virus engines regard PuTTY as malicious, which is kind of silly. It's an old version of a program that uses some old programming techniques, but that's a false positive. And then it tells you how many libraries it loads, and it tells you how many imports it has, although it no longer counts them. You have to click this to see them. So that's a start. And um, also, if I look at the compressed version, notice this had 56 indicators, this had 42 indicators. These indicators are suspicious things. The file references strings, the file is scored by virus total, the count of imports is suspicious, you know, and here is some level. So it's trying to rate how suspicious this file is by behavior. And the compressed file has a different bunch of indicators um, on a blacklist and so on. So in fact, all these are false positives <coughs> because neither of these files is malicious, but the one that's compressed with UPX is reasonably a little suspicious anyway. All right, and so let's look at the sections. Um, if I click sections here, it'll show me, here's the sections, text.rdata.data .data .data and dot resource. These are the normal section names you see, and the sections are down here with entropy and so on. Uh, the normal stuff down here. And um, here, if I look at the sections here, I see a UPX0, UPX1, and dot resource. And the UPX1 has a uh, file ratio. 90, 93% of the file is here. It has a whole section of size 0, which is really weird. And you also can see the entropy of this section is 7.9. Now, entropy is a measure of how much data is stored in a file. So if you have a file that is uh, just a bunch of zeros, or like a Microsoft Word document with just a bunch of spaces, that might be a lot of kilobytes, but it doesn't have much information. So that's low entropy, which means it could be compressed with a program like WinZip and make it really small. This is already compressed or encrypted data with an entropy of 7.9. The maximum entropy is 8, meaning all 8 bits of every byte are full. And this is as close to that as it can get. So this is compressed data. Here's a more normal thing, like a resource section full of things like icons has an entropy of 4. Here's the, and in this uh, unpacked file, you see the entropy is like 6 or 2 or 3. Uh, this 8 is not a natural entropy you'd occur, except for zipped data. So what's going on, of course, this is the zipped text section. And this is the empty area it's going to unzip into. So you can sort of see what's going to happen here in here. And so that's the game here. All right, and then you can see the imports, which we've seen in other tools as well. If I look at the imports here, there's quite a few imports in PuTTY. The real PuTTY has more imports that will fit on the screen, although really not that many. But the compressed PuTTY has, um, oh, it's not even showing me the imports here, which it should have shown me a few of them. But anyway, I'm not going to worry about it. All right. Um, all right. Anyway, I'm sure you can compare the compressions there. And so here, you can play with that a bit. You can go find the entry point of one of these malicious files. And then we can um, examine this decompression with Ollie Debug, which is what I want to do. Once again, Ollie Debug is missing from the latest version of the Flare VM, so you have to download it. But it's not a big download. The only thing that's a little screwy is you also have to download this thing called Ollie Dump and add that dill to it to add the extension to Ollie Debug. Ollie Debug has a plugin just to do the job we're doing now. This is a really common problem that you have a compressed file where the file on disk is compressed and hard to read, and they do something like modify the decompressor. So you can't just run it through UPX or anything, and yet you want to understand what that file does. So you run it, and then you look at the memory, and you can turn that back into a unpacked disk file with Ollie Debug, with the Ollie Dump plugin, and that's what we're going to do here. So let's launch Ollie Debug, which I put in my downloads folder, and it's here. And you see, I also added this dill file, Ollie Dump, into the same folder, so it'll be available. So I launch Ollie Debug, and I ignore the warnings and such. I make it less than full screen so I can have two of these. 
All right, but let's start with putty.exe. I'm on the desktop and there's putty. All right, so when Ollie debug loads, this is where you really get to see how Microsoft um, executables work. It launches, you can see the memory. If you do view memory, you can see the memory where it loads. This loads at 400,000 where it would like to be. That's where it puts the portable executable header. Then it puts the text section starting here at 401,000. Then it puts each section here, the R data goes, the data and the resource go in different memory segments. And that is the memory used by this program. The text section contains the executable code starting at 401,000. So the, um, if you go here, it should start at 401,000 here. For some reason, it's starting at 455,000, which is a little screwy. Let's take a look at that memory. And 455 is still in that section. See, 45D. So at least it's in the text section. It's not near the start where I usually see it, but it's in the text section, so that's more or less reasonable. All right, and so here it does executing a push 60 and a push and a call, and all this is the code that performs the functions of PuTTY. Now let's take a look at the um, compressed version of PuTTY. So I launch a second instance of Ollie Debug, and I open the compressed PuTTY. Okay, and this complains, by the way, saying something looks wrong with this program. I'll just say, no, don't worry about it. I'm aware that there's something unusual about this program. And now I can compare these two things. And here's two things to notice. The first thing is the starting address is different, 486 instead of 455. The second thing is it starts with push AD instead of push 60. Now, we can look at the memory maps. And here, if I look at, we already looked at the memory map of normal putty. If I look at the memory map of the compressed putty, it's quite different. It has just UPX0, UPX1, and resource. By the way, here's a fun fact. The resource section is never compressed by UPX. It's a mistake of the developer. They forgot the dot in the name, so it never finds it. So the resource section is not compressed. But anyway, what's going on here is UPX0 is sitting there, and UPX1 is here, and one of them is full of data and the other is empty. And we can find out which is which by right-clicking and dumping this. It'll show me, well, this one is just all full of zeros. So that must be the one that is going to be filled up by the decompressor. So UPX1 is apparently the one that contains the data. So let's dump that. And OK, here it is. It's interpreted it as code, but um, it's not really code, a lot of it. Some of it's code, but the rest is all data. Anyway, so now let's see what it looks like in the CPU window. Here's something else interesting about this one. You can the, the actual unzipping code is so short, you can just page through it pretty quickly. If you just page down a few times, you'll find the end of it. This is the end. This stuff is all zeros. It really is not very many lines of code at all, just 50 or 100 lines of code. So what's going on is this is the unzipper, and this is when it's done unzipping, and it's going to jump into the unzipped code. And this address should look familiar, 4550F0. It jumps here. Now that address right now is empty. It's all full of zeros. It's one of those things we dumped. But it's not going to stay that way. In fact, let's take a look at that. If I go to expression, in fact, I can might be able to go to, no, I can't really, especially 4550F0. OK. 4550F0. If I go there, uh, it's not clear what's here, but it's certainly not right. This was supposed to start with push 60 and so on. You can see it here. Push 60, push putty, call putty. Whatever's there is not right. And in fact, I think a lot of it is, is, zero, is blank, but I'm not going to worry about it. Now, I don't remember quite how. I'm just going to do a debug uh, reload to get back where I started. Um, File. I thought I could do a yeah, restart. There we go. I want to get back where I started. All right, so here I am back. So what I want to do is run to the end of the unzipper. 
So that means I have to go down to the end of the unzipper, which is easy to spot because of all this zero stuff. There's the end of it. So I use F2 to put a breakpoint there. It turns red, which means it will stop when I run down to there. So F9 will run down to that and then stop. And now I want to go one more step, which is F7. And now I'm up here. And now it matches. Push 60, push putty, push putty, move EDI. It has unzipped putty, put it in memory. And now I have the real putty program in memory, even though it was not in its original form on the disk. So now all I have to do is dump it with plugins, ollie dump, dump debugged process. And now it will show me the starting address is 400,000 plus this um, modify 550F0 to get me there. And I have other numbers I could adjust here, but I don't need to. I can just dump it and it will create a, um, this is putty dump .exe. All right. Let me see where I am in my instructions. We've done all this. And now I can examine the dumped file in PE Studio. So let's get rid of Holly Debug. And Putty Dumped is here. All right. And uh, let's try PE Studio, which I think I had to put in my downloads folder. OK. Putty dump. All right. And now it'll take a little while to process it. There looks like it's coming along. I'm waiting to see the sections and the imports. But anyway, I saved the image here of what it's going to do. It's, it, by, this process is not perfect, unfortunately. It didn't reconstruct the whole thing. But um, it did recover most of the import section, and you can see the sections. Well, it looks like it's going to take a little longer to process than I wanted to wait for. Anyway, you'll see them here. It, it does not give you a perfect uh, dump. All right. And so there's a few challenges here where you can find some flags by... Uh, using those tools on some files. And I'll stop this recording and put this one up.